Hey guys, so I've actually been looking to start making more content and I thought, hey, why not make a, a, another music video? Those are, those are always lots of fun and, okay, I, I'll do a guide, just, just give me a little more time to get my thoughts together. No, oh no, please, not like this! I said I'd do it! I said I'd do it! Stephanie said he had made the most in-depth brawl fall that I could ever see. Ever. Well, thanks to this video, he's now a liar. This message was brought to Sir, you freaking wrote You locked me in the bathroom. What are you- Get off my computer! Wow. What? I said probably the most in-depth guide ever. That doesn't make me a li- Get out. Go out. Ah. Bad. Why is- Why is my mouse missing again? Bad. Bad. I'm sorry about that. Ever since Mordex was added in the guitar nerfs. <clears throat> Anyways, let's start over. Hi, my name is Stefanofro. I'm an Orion and an Artemis main. You may know me from my first guide, my montages, or my music videos that don't exist because I refuse to acknowledge their existence. Or maybe you don't know me at all. If that's the case, well, firstly, hi there. And secondly, I am so, so sorry. And I genuinely apologize on behalf of whatever dark forces brought you to this wretched place. Whatever the case, this video will highlight all of the special techniques that I discovered while working up to level 100. <clears throat> while playing Artemis. Once again, just like the previous guide, this is not a tutorial for first timers to the game. Although I will cover a few somewhat basic strings on Scythe, this video is more geared towards players from gold all the way to even high diamond. They're looking to learn Artemis or her weapons. As you can probably tell from the link of this video, this guide is a little... long. This is mostly Scythe's fault, because as fun as it is to say Scythe takes no skill, it's... Oh my frickin' Asuri, will you just sh As fun as it is to say Scythe takes no skill, it's really one of, if not the most technical weapon in the game. If you are a beginner looking to learn Scythe, I suggest checking out this guide right here by Cupset. It just covers the moveset of the weapon, however it should help show you how the weapon generally flows if you're new to the game. As for the basics to Lance, Costalux, a pro player and a fellow Lance main, has a pretty good guide covering its strings and combos at a beginner level for those looking to learn Lance. So to start off, some very very quick general tips. In the last video I said the best way to improve is to learn a new technique, and I still completely stand by that. Whether you're rank 1 or... Uh, Learning new techniques will not be easy, and will require a lot of creativity or analysis on your end to experiment with new things. But I'm here to expose some of the secret techniques I've learned to hopefully help you out a little there. I might not be the brightest shed in the drawer, but I do know that in addition to learning new techniques, movement is absolutely the most important thing in this game. It's what keeps you from getting hit, it's what grants you stage control, it's what lets you land attacks for Pete's sake. In high-level diamond gameplay, matches basically consist of constantly stacking layers upon layers of pure movement in order to bait out attacks. Although it may not be particularly enjoyable, it's how you win neutral and how you win the game. Unfortunately, I can't wave my magic flux tape wand and instantly teach you movement, but I will be giving a few tips to help you practice. So jumping right into it, we have approaches and cutting out the neutral game. As I outlined in the first video, raw engagements with little thought are almost never beneficial when playing against someone of similar skill level, and this will only become even more apparent the higher and higher you climb. The thing is, Brahalla is not about attacking, it's about punishing. Even the most aggressive players at high level play don't blatantly attack. They typically are just pressuring you into making the first mistake so they can punish that mistake. Whether your mistake is throwing out an imprecise attack in neutral or poor movement. If you want to win, you have to know how to win neutral. So, lucky for you, I'll explain exactly how you can do that. Warning, this video is about to get real f***ing boring, real quick, for the next three and a half minutes. Remember, all time stamps are in the description. Or keep watching. You f nerd. To win neutral, there are four things you must know. First, you must know all your opponent's options and stay in the blind spots of all these options as often as possible. Avoid their threat areas. This is known as spacing. Secondly, you must move around in such a way that your opponent can never safely approach you. Always try to keep their approach options within your threat areas. This is also a part of spacing. Thirdly, and this is kind of a long one, 
You must throw out moves that firstly cannot be punished easily, and secondly, cover the most likely positions you feel your opponent will move to. This can kind of be looked at like a spectrum. Safe moves are less likely to hit, but also less likely to get punished. Coverage moves, for lack of a better word, are more likely to land, but more likely to get punished. Most top players will try to fall somewhere between safe and optimal, never putting out more than they need to. Most general players will fall way over here. They'll simply throw out attacks to try and hit whatever moves on their screen. Don't worry, I will be covering moves that are generally somewhat safe to throw out in neutral. Side note, in reality, it's a bit less linear than this, and probably a bit more like this. There's overly safe moves that will never hit and never get punished because you're throwing them way over in outer space. There's overly aggressive options that may hit, but on whiff will definitely get punished pretty hard. And then there's moves that really weren't thrown out for any particular reason, or they were just very poorly thought out. These are the moves you punish when in neutral. These are the moves you should throw out when in neutral. And these moves... Honestly, it's a lot more fun to play over here, but it's also way riskier and probably not a good idea. And now that I've gotten way off topic, number four, you must apply pressure. There are two main types of pressure, offensive and positional. Offensive pressure consists of throwing out safe moves in directions that your opponent could be in in the next given moment. Offensive pressure is done through throwing out hitboxes, obviously, this is something I do a lot, but at higher level play, this becomes less and less effective. It's still very present in top level play, it's just not preferred. As players at that level have much faster movement and response times to punish this kind of pressure. The higher and higher you go, the more you'll see positional pressure. Pro players threaten each other with the potential to attack, rather than the attacks themselves. Positional pressure usually occurs more often when two players are equally matched. This can often make some games look a little slow. And if you're wondering about stage control and all of this, stage control is just a form of prolonged positional pressure. So those are the four main steps to winning neutral, and by extension, winning games, and getting sick and tired of hearing me say win neutral. Anyways, as you can see <clears throat> from the uh, footage playing in the background right now, that's not usually how I play. I gain stage control about as often as I voluntarily give it up, and my decision-making skills are about as sharp as the scissors Hattori uses to cut her hair. Please, get this girl the proper help she needs. This girl is clearly in tremendous pain, and clearly in need of a friend. No, not, not you. You don't even know what you're doing with your hair. No, this is... <sighs> is that a... No, no, no. Of course it's not. Oh my gosh! Cut! I will not cut! Let me leave that fails to cut! <clears throat> Anyways, um, to sum it up, you should play neutral a lot more intelligently than I do. And now that I've wasted your time explaining unnecessary extra info that is pretty much relevant to the rest of the video, let me waste some, uh, how many minutes are left in the- Oh! <clears throat> don't, don't, don't look at that. Don't, don't look there. So, how do you approach? Now, I tried my best, I, I really did, I, but I could not figure out the best way to sum this up quickly, because it's usually pretty complicated, but I'll give it a shot. You throw your weapon. No, really, I'm serious. You, you just throw your weapon. Like, if it's not working, then stop doing it, because it's not working. But this is why even sometimes in the highest levels of play, some games devolve down into pure weapon throws at high damage. First of all, stop it. Get help. Because at that point, it's about as beneficial as eating a Tide Pod and washing it down with a bottle of a game. But if it is working, then it's about as beneficial as uh, throwing up a Tide Pod. I don't know, I'm not good at analogies. Because it's currently the easiest and safest way to engage in the current meta. Another weapon throw! If it ain't broke, don't oh. fix it, man! I just know! She's still alive! No, she isn't, and we're going to a game five! But there are some drawbacks to throws, like losing your weapon, becoming unarmed, and then getting weapon starved to death by your opponent because you just sacrificed your primary means of defending yourself, but other than that, it has a pretty decent reward when it does connect. But like I said, if it's not working... Stop it. Get some help. Stefan Ufro. I want you to give yourself a chance. A chance to find out all the wonderful things you really can be. 
As for approaching with Artemis' actual weapons, when they're not just being pelted into somebody's face, I'll go ahead and start with the more requested of the two. Siphon. I mean, sickle. I, uh, farm tool. No, no. Scythe isn't exactly the strongest weapon for approaching. I'd say its ability to approach falls somewhere between 9-speed gold Hattori on King's Pass, all the way to my parents. When they approached me to ask me where they went wrong to have an Orion Man as a son, it's tailored more towards follow-up potential than it is for initial engagement, but it does have two moderately safe options. Probably the easiest and most reliable option is dash jump down it. This move, no, Trophius, please, I, I'm in the middle of, no, just, just, just ignore him. Dash jump downer can pick up enemies quickly along the ground and is useful if it's not overused. Don't toss it out expecting your opponent to willingly throw themselves into it. Contrary to popular belief, you actually have to time and space your attacks on Scythe properly. Being Scythe's easiest approach option though means it's also really quite predictable and opponents will be, or at least should be, expecting it. Nair can be used sword similarly to down air for opponents that are being floaty and like to cosplay as sentient pogo sticks, however, it's not exactly a move you should expect to land often in the neutral, but it's generally somewhat safe. I'd say it's probably among one of my slightly more used engagement options because of its distance, its safety on miss, and everybody in this freaking game thinks they're a five-year-old popping around in a massive bounce castle, never touching the ground, flying around because, oh look, the floor is lava! What a happy little <laughs> predicament we found ourselves in! Both Nair and Downer are great tools, and don't get me wrong, the rest of the kit is pretty great too, but all the other moves should essentially be used solely for punishing. Whether you're punishing with attacks or poor movement, that should be your main objective. Punishing. Dash and neutralites are okay, and probably the next best thing for approaching, but the thing is, even though you're more likely to land a neutralite approach compared to Nair or Downer, you're also much more likely to get punished for it. As for the other moves, Sidelight hits a little too close to be used out of raw neutral, even with the dash, and has a handful of recovery frames, so I would avoid using it as a raw engagement option. However, it should be used as your primary option for punishing movement, which means you'll probably be using it somewhat often. Look, a good scythe player will not exert themselves farther than they need to in neutral, because they understand that raw approaches are about as weak as Brawlhalla's Switch player based when Smash was released. This may come off as a surprise, or it may not, but Scythe's approach options are not in the form of attacks. Its approach options are more so in the form of movement, pressuring your opponent and punishing their mistakes as a result of that pressure. I uh, probably should have prefaced this entire section with that. Sorry guys, my editor sucks. As I keep stressed, you know, name calling doesn't help anyone. No, Asuri, I never said guitars were trash. <sighs> I said you were trash. <laughs> As I keep stressing, Scythe's strength is through punishes, not through approaches. This is a statement that can be applicable to every weapon, however, I'd say more so with Scythe, as it lacks consistent and effective methods to safely break through neutral. For a quick overview, I'd say Scylight should absolutely be your primary punish option for a grounded opponent. Downlight should be your secondary, but kinda seldomly used punish option for when you need a little extra range, and Neutralite should typically be used to control space and catch early jumps and dodges. So for those of you who are more inclined to impaling women, children, blind people, or poor animals with large, sharp, fire-emitting javelins, or even three of those things all at the same time, here's some tips for all of you sadists out there to hopefully help you express your violent tendencies through even more destructive measures. For Lance, Sidelight is definitely your best tool to try and consistently because it is Lance's primary setup and combo tool. Although much like Scythe Satellite, it should be used primarily for punishing rather than engaging. So why is it in the approach section of this video? I don't know. This is my video. Stop asking me questions. The missing this move brings you closer to your opponent and closer to being smacked in the face with the parry axe down air. Which is why you should only be using it when you know it's going to hit. Sarah, on the other hand, is easily Lance's best approach option, hands down. Dash Jump Sider is fantastic at catching jumps at a distance and should be used fairly often. I mean, it's not really safe to randomly throw anything out in neutral, but if you're going to, uh, Sider's not a bad choice. If your opponent is punishing your Siders consistently though, then you should lean much less into approaches and focus on staying grounded against them. Now I just covered that Lance Sarah is great in the air, however what most players don't realize is that you can use Sarah as a highly effective dash jump fast fall aerial. A fast jump dash fall what now? A dash jump fast fall do all end all, break all your opponent's wills wall, do drone a ball, Saul, just hug the small wall in Great Hall and don't fall, let's all kill the Neanderthal. 
aerial attack. Ever since Dash was introduced, Sierra's gained way more potential than most people are even aware of. In the, uh, let's see, let's go, scroll down and then go. 20 months Dash has been in the game. I've seen almost no one else use this specific technique, but I found Sierra's actually one of the greatest grounded approaches in the entire game. Sometimes opponents may stand at a distance, waiting for you to throw out a move to punish. Sometimes they may just have a very grounded heavy playstyle. Either way, players in Diamond often know the threat areas of yours and their weapons to a T. But most don't factor in this particular move because, well, nobody uses it. It's hard to react to an option that you don't know exists. It's very fast, grants you so much more distance than in Dash Sidelight, and your movement doesn't come to a complete halt either. Another option along the same lines is Dash Jump Fastfall Reverse Nair. It's not quite as reliable or safe as the Sair, but in some rare cases, it might just be the perfect mix-up. In this particular ranked match, I was facing incredibly defensive Koji, who quite literally would stand still and wait for me to whiff an attack or lose my jumps before even daring to touch his attack button. I noticed early on he had trouble spacing against Lance Nair and seemed to be unaware of its generous steering, and as a result, I was able to exploit that with Grand Nair's to bait him to attack when he otherwise probably wouldn't have. I'm sure it's probably pretty tilting for opponents to face, but in some cases you just have to fight fire with, uh, well, fire. The inputs, however, are the catch. Most players watching this video may have a bit of difficulty executing a dash jump fastball attack precisely, as the inputs are quite tight and specific. For players that would like to learn this, you must learn how to dash jump fastball first. Then from there you can begin adding in the attack. To dash jump fastball, press the dash button in the direction you'd like to dash, then jump and immediately input to the side and then down diagonally in a rotating motion. This must all be done at supersonic speeds. The timing is very precise, and it won't be easy for most, but once you get it down, it becomes muscle memory. If you then want to add in an attack, the inputs become uh, a little more chaotic, but you just have to input whatever aerial attack you want to use immediately after the dash jump fast file inputs. I mentioned using Lancer covering the first guide, and I'd like to reiterate that point. This is a pretty unique option specific to Lance for approaching when your opponent is floating and you can't quite get a solid opening. It doesn't quite break through neutral efficiently, but it's good for mixing up your movement every now and then. Every once in a while you may find it to be a spammy, but viable tactic, such as in this clip. Using exhausted recoveries is an especially easy way of throwing out raw hitboxes that also aid in movement. Lastly, like the last guide, Gravity Cancel Neutralite is still a good tool to use to try and break through the neutral game. The reason this is still a strong move is because of its long active frames, and even if you miss, it instantly becomes a bait in which you can cover your fall with a Lance Nair and stuff out most punishes. Just beware, using it puts your dodge on a 2.7 second cooldown if you don't touch the ground, and because of this, you should be careful about your positioning to your opponent when you throw it out. Avoid overusing it against weapons with a strong punish game on air dodges like spear, gauntlets, guitars, or of course scythe. The last of which can basically murder you with every attack it slaps you with. Good thing I'm gonna show you how to do that. Once again, just like in my last video, I'll give my disclaimer. You shouldn't expect to land all these approach options every time you throw them out, and realistically, nothing is 100% unpunishable either. These options aren't here to solve all your problems, but knowing they're an option can help you when you need to adapt. Now for follow-ups and reads. Wait, no, uh, only follow-ups. Unlike my last guide, I will be splitting up follow-ups and reads into two separate sections, starting with Scythe. Woo, huh. <laughs> the section is gonna be very loaded. Before I can get into it though, it's important that you understand all the terminology in abbreviated shorthand. I'll make this quick as many players watching this video should already be familiar with these terms. Some moves on Scythe have two options. On Sidelight, for example, you can use a soft hit, much like a passive-aggressive pat on the head, or a heavy hit, much like a backhanded slap from your disappointed father as he tells you to stop playing Brahalla for the 16th time in a row. The soft hit occurs when you release your movement keys halfway through the move. The heavy hit occurs when you actively hold down a particular direction during the attack. This is known as active input. Active input is available on Scythe Sidelight, Downlight, Neutral Air, and Down Air. The neutral versions will appear as follows, while the active input versions will be denoted with an AI in front. So anyways, <laughs> right, right, a scythe. Prepare your noggins, because this is going to flick some galaxy brain on you. As I said, approaches aren't scythe's strong suit, but follow-ups are where this weapon really shines. Now I'm not going to go through the super basic follow-ups, this guide isn't really about the basics, there's plenty of those guides out there. And it's also not about the flashy either, it's about what works and what's consistent. 
Those of you watching this guide should already know that recovery, for example, can string into things like speed dodge down air, and satellite can string into down air, neutral light, nair, D light, etc. If you're not familiar with any of those strings, I recommend checking out the scythe guide I mentioned in the beginning of this video. For another scythe video that shows pretty much every dodge punish possible, you can check out this excellent guide by p -Laws. He goes into the different ways to punish specific dodges. If you're interested in additional strings or gimps that are more flashy, I highly recommend watching it. <laughs> and that's not even because he gave me a shout out in the end. <coughs> Ooh, sorry, I think I'm coming down with something. Sorry about that. As for this guide, I'll only be listing the slightly less commonly known strings that you'll most likely get the most mileage out of, as well as what's optimal and why it works. So to start out, I'll go ahead and cover the follow-ups on side that are fairly consistent even without catching a dodge, particularly the ones that are not the commonly known bread and butter strings of scythe. So that means nothing with side light and nothing with neutral light. Everyone already knows those ones to death. The first one I'd like to address is active input nair into speed dodge sair. Now I said I wouldn't cover the basics, but there are a lot of people I don't see using this. Active input nair into sair is usually around a minimum of 10 to 11 frames currently, which is massive, but I found people tend to run into it anyways, because reasons. It usually works if they either don't dodge, if they fast fall, or if they jump a little late. Nair Sayer can also kill in the right circumstances. Some people do use Downer instead, you'll see that a bit in PLL's video, and that does have slightly higher gimp potential. However, Satter has greater coverage and consistency because it hits in the middle, catches down dodges when in kill percent, catches late jumps, follows up faster, does more damage, and also catches fast falls, whereas Downer only catches fast falls and down dodges. Satter is best for consistency and reliability. Nair to Downer is best for early kills and fast fall reads. It mostly depends on which option you prefer and who you're fighting. I personally use Sayer more often, but if you're going for style points or gimp potential, a Danner sometimes works too. Also, you should use recovery for jump reads, which could be quite common, but I'll get more into detail on that in the dodge read section. Sayer is a good follow up for many things. Downer into Sayer is also a consistent aerial strain to keep in mind. It works at a variety of damages too. The next string I'd like to mention is, well, is actually not a string, it's a combo, at 7 decks, at the time of this video at least. Artemis can only get up to 6 decks, so it's only true for Mirage with Dex Dance and Naruto, but its usefulness is still applicable to Artemis. The move I'm talking about is Nair Ser. This is pretty basic too, but the reason this is important is because it's only one frame when input perfectly on Artemis. So anytime you hit a Nair at white to yellow damage, you might want to consider actually going for a Ser too, even if your opponent has not used their dodge yet. This is assuming you've practiced it enough though, to get the inputs nearly frame perfect every time, which is absolutely essential, especially against a diamond player. And real quick, since I mentioned Nair Ser, if you're a scythe player, please stop going for sidelight neutral light Nair. It's jumpable, it's dodgeable, it's everything you don't want in a scythe string. Like pickles on pizza or pancakes with mayo. <laughs> like somebody likes pancakes with mayo and that's what this is. Pancakes that's, with mayo are good. That's absolutely disgusting. I can't, yeah, I, I, I want to hold the names <laughs> to show everybody's name, but but I can't with freaking pancakes with mayo. We'll just call them pancakes in parallel. <laughs> Versus silly Kobe absolutely and Simba. Disgusting. Pancakes with mayo are not good. It's not bad, the side string. I mean, it, the mayonnaise, that's nasty. I still use side light, neutral light sometimes, but it's usually completely on accident when I do. Instead, you should be using Sidelight Nair, which is only dodgeable. You can't jump away from it. And it goes into the Nair Sair combo I just mentioned. For beginners to the weapon, the inputs for Sidelight Nair are a bit tight, so you must familiarize yourself with it and make sure you can hit it consistently. Anyways, back to the aerial stuff. Another stream that's very good to know about is Down Air into Nair. Most Scythe mains already know about this and use it as a dodge punish, but what I don't think most of them or even most pros realize is that it can be a true combo. Once again, at seven decks. It's one frame for Artemis. The true combo comes in at about orange damage, or around 110 to be specific. If you're aiming for the one frame string or true combo, you cannot use a speed dodge. But if you're looking for slightly better accuracy or they're closer to deep orange, you can use one. Once again, because it's such a tight follow-up, it's very good even if you don't catch a dodge. You should use the string when you come in high from above. So, much like the downer nair combo, you can land active input downer into D light as a true combo at orange. This combo is actually true for Artemis as well. You can use this version of the downer combo when you get the lower, grounded variant of downer. It works without active input too, but it's slightly more consistent and faster with the turnaround. Oftentimes, any string that can be landed this tight is good to throw into the mix every now and then when you get the chance. The last string I'd like to mention is D light into speed dodge nair. 
When you land a D-Light, normally this should be your go-to follow-up, unless of course your opponent is at red or you want stage control and offer the active input version. The thing that's special about D-Light Nair is not only is it unjumpable only for frames and works at every damage, but it also typically gives you a very strong positional advantage over your opponent because you can drift the Nair backwards. This sets up perfectly for additional dodge reads with neutral light. This means if you hit the Nair, well, you get free damage, but if they dodge the Nair, you have the potential to deal a ton more damage because you immediately regain proper spacing for Scythe, while your opponent just got tossed into the air on a full 2.7 second dodge cooldown. The Nair grants you good spacing and can be incredibly dangerous for your opponent if they don't react carefully. Okay, one of the huge things I do all the time when I don't have a read on my enemy yet is cover all my hits with a delayed neutral light. This one is very important, and honestly, this is where you'll probably get a lot of your damage build up. Neutralite is fast and has great hitboxing. Doing this protects you from instant wake-ups, dash-ins, and allows you to protect yourself with a quick attack. Although I said I won't address satellite in Neutralite, there is one exception that I will bring up. This is a bit case-specific, but after landing a Neutralite or Satellite, you can go for a dash jump reverse Nair. It's a tight input and a very limited read that only catches jumps and up dodges, but the reason I even bring it up is because it can be effective when you and your opponent are both heavily damaged and attempting to play carefully, because it's nearly completely safe on whiff and covers a dodge that isn't uncommon at late healths. Additionally, Satellite Speed Dodge Reverse Nair is also somewhat safe, but it does use up your dodge. At red damage, downer into weapon toss is almost a true combo, so that's also pretty good too. So all the strings and combos I just mentioned are follow-ups on Scythe that you should consider going for, whether or not you happen to catch your opponent's dodge. This also includes the basic standard satellite and neutral light follow-ups that I did not cover. Now finally, I'll be getting into the dodge punishes. For active input satellite, Exuit made a great video showing the benefits of a dash in neutral light and just how powerful it can really be. Uh, I'm lagging. Hello? Covers up? Okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> I won't say it's as broken as it looks, but it certainly is not a bad option. I'd say reverse dash neutral light should be your default, but for opponents who dodge away, a forward dash neutral light is your best bet. This works exactly the same way if you land an active input D light at low damage. And with this dash and follow idea in mind, this should be your main focus when playing Scythe paying attention to dodges, and instantly memorizing your opponent's last reaction to specific moves. This goes for any weapon. I will get way too in-depth on this a little later, but hey, that's literally the title of this guide, and for some reason you clicked on it, so away we go! Unlike Spear and Lance in my last guide, Scythe doesn't exactly have a specific zero to death string like Lance and Spear. I'm not saying it can't zero to death people, I think it's pretty obvious that's not the case given the uh, extensive footage we have. I'm just saying it doesn't have one specific string dedicated to this. It does, however, have a primary punish string. At low damage, if you catch an air dodge with a side light or a neutral light, your go-to string should be Nair, Sair, Nair, Sair. You might get called a spammer, but hey, you're not the one getting slashed in the face for not knowing how to dodge properly. Non-Scythe users will probably look at this and see it as insanely broken or something. However, there are a ton of tiny little things you need to internalize when using this string or else you will not land it. Firstly, it only works at low damage. Secondly, if your opponent is at light yellow damage, you must speed dodge horizontally in order to land the second Nair, using up your dodge and a gravity cancel. Thirdly, it becomes jumpable after the first Sair. Fourthly, if they're already in deep yellow, it's best to end the string early with recovery or a signature. I know that's a lot of stuff. So Steph, you mentally inept vegetable man, what am I even supposed to do with that information? Well, I'm glad you asked, my sweet baby. This means that it's very important for the Scythe user to pay attention to their opponent's instant reactions during the frames in between each attack, as well as the color they flash, which indicates their damage. Whether you make note of it subconsciously or consciously, it's critical that you at least pay some attention to whether or not your opponent tries to jump after your first Nair and or your first Sair. Look very closely for the clouds that appear when players jump. This typically indicates whether you should go for a horizontal chase dodge if they don't jump, or a diagonal chase dodge if they do jump. If it looks like they're smacking their jump button like mashed potatoes, it may even be better to go for a full on recovery. Typically, you should default to the horizontal chase dodge for the second Nair or use recovery. Also, with this string, if you don't catch the full dodge, you may just prefer to end your string early to go for another read. 
or try to finish the shorter string with a signature as I mentioned earlier. At orange damage and above, you should typically go straight from neutral light or side light into a recovery instead of using this string. So that's it for the main punish string for when you're on the ground. So what if, personally, you prefer the air? I know you're all excited to hear me vomit mouth words for another few paragraphs, so I'll do just that. <laughs> for when you're coming from the air, typically you'll be coming in with a down air. At low damage, if you land a down air against someone's dodge near the ground, you should go for a neutral light. From neutral light, you can go into a portion of the previously mentioned string, the nair ser nair ser. If you hit the dare from a bit higher, you should go for a nair instead. From there, you can string from an active input nair into D light, speed dodge nair, which, as I mentioned earlier, D light nair sets up for additional dodge reads. Something you'll notice a lot with basically any string weapon like scythe, gauntlets, or cannon is that if you catch a full air dodge, it basically becomes your number one mission to play hot potato with your opponent and do your best to not let them touch the ground within that 2.7 second time frame, or else their dodge will reset. I mean, it's pretty fitting to be honest, considering they're the ones shooting the floor like freaking lava, never touching the ground, flying around because, oh look, the floor's lava again! What a happy. So, I spoke to my therapist. Uh, he said I need to take a bit of a break from Brawlhalla, but uh, that was before he told me he was a Cassidy man. And <laughs> as you know, you can't trust Cassidy's, can you? <laughs> so he's not my therapist anymore. <laughs> so let's get right back into it. Keep in mind these dodge punishes are only in the best case scenario. If you happen to catch your opponent on a full air dodge cooldown, which is somewhat infrequent in a typical match. If your opponent touches the ground right after their dodge, their dodge will be back up in only one second meaning your punish options are severely limited. You are guaranteed about one free hit after your dodge punish, sometimes two hits, so make sure you choose wisely. If they're on a one second dodge cooldown, it's really up to you to decide how you want to punish them. I personally use Silate Nair and Silate Downer, but it mostly depends on the situation. Uh, Effie. Effie, please. I, not, not here, I'm, I'm making a guy, just, just, just go. Just, just ignore him, guys. Anyways, if they're at orange or above, when you catch a one second dodge, you should typically aim for a recovery or signature finisher. When playing Scythe, it's absolutely essential to know the approximate amount of time you have left before your opponent's dodge comes back by watching very closely to determine whether your opponent managed to touch the ground or not. A lot of the tips from my follow-ups and reads lance section in my last guide are actually still quite relevant, so I, I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already seen it. Although there are a few things I'd like to add. D-Light into Neutral Light has gone through a number of changes since my last guide, but it's still the same one frame on Orion and two frames on Artemis. You no longer need to dodge or dash in to land the Neutral Light, which actually helps a lot for maintaining Lance's proper spacing. You can D-Light and go for the Neutral Light follow-up to catch downward dodges and spot dodges. The other thing is, when you're near the edge and you land a Neutral Light on someone at lower damages, it's a great idea to consider going for a dash in Side Light, which of course can lead into several other attacks. On stage, people are more likely to dodge this, but when they're off stage near the edge, they usually don't expect it, and a surprising amount of people end up falling for this. The same way a surprising amount of people watching this from a computer will fall for a fake Discord notification sound. Some people have told me that they think InLight has bad follow-ups. Well, let me tell you something. They are completely wrong. Also, I may not know what I'm talking about either, but you've gotten this far into the video, so I guess there's no turning back now for you, is there? Currently, my go-to for inlight is jump, speed dodge, reverse ground, and air. This covers almost every dodge, and it's very hard for your opponent to avoid in many cases. It's useful because you can choose to steer it backwards for safety, or steer it forwards and slide past your opponent depending on how you feel they're going to move. If you think they're going to dodge away, inlight into jump, speed dodge, ground, and air works great, but it only covers non-dodges and horizontal dodges away. Just know, Nair is fantastic follow-up for neutral light. Speaking of Nair, it's wise to do your best to use neutral air to cover enemies attempting to get in on you from above. However, you should avoid falling Nairs when you can. They're not bad, but you do get much more benefit from rising Nairs because you can do a grounded Sair to cover your landing. This isn't to say you should always go for the Sair, but being able to cover your landing with an attack is always a good thing to have at your disposal. Also, something to keep note of, Lance Nair does true combo into Sair and recovery, as well as a few other things. Because of all of this, Nair is very good at controlling space in the air. I guess you could call it Nair control. <laughs> what is my existence? So I get asked the following question a lot. How do I read dodges? So let me answer that. 
reading dodges isn't always actually reading, per se. Many times it's really just raw reaction time paired with a half guess. Oftentimes you might know an opponent will dodge away, but there are literally three different ways to dodge away. You have to be able to properly react to the right one, and to do that, you must train your reaction speed to be very, very quick. I found the best way to practice reacting dodges, and, well, practice in general, is to hop into training mode, set the bot to Koji, give him a bow, set the bot to hard, dodges to random, and damage reset to on. Why Koji? No, it's not because I have three non-existent music videos dedicated to this man. Just trust me, he's the least autist- <clears throat> artistically challenged when it comes to attacking. He can string into signatures, he can string, period. His dodge and combo inputs are usually frame perfect, especially thanks to his decks. His signatures work really well with the bot's programming and complement his bow's threat area perfectly. And he doesn't do this. I often- I often practice by trying to push the bot's points as far down into negative as possible because killing with damage reset on is not easy. It forces you to either have to apply constant pressure or have completely perfect edge guard gimps, as well as stay alive yourself. The only real drawback of this is that he sigs way too much when you're at red, and he is still just a bot. Other than that, he's perfect for training your dodge reaction speed as well as just regular training. So anyways, back to dodge reads. There are 11 possible options a player has when getting out of hit stun. They can dodge up, down, left, right, up, left, down, left, up, right, down, right, in place, or not dodge at all if they happen to be lacking a few brain cells. Or if they <laughs> have a 5000 IQ like me and are counter reading your, your, your counter read to try and read your, your counter read, because that's, uh, that's definitely what I'm doing when I, when I don't press my dodge key fast enough. <clears throat> the 11th option on hit stun is waking up with intact, whether it's gravity canceled or not. Uh, wake up. There are two primary factors that influence which of these dodges players will use when they're hit. Keep in mind, I'm not referring to dodges used for movement. I'm specifically talking about dodge responses after being hit by you. In order from most influential to least influential, these are number one, your opponent's habits, and number two, your opponent's position relative to you and to the stage. Oh, and <laughs> number three, of course, if they're a hammer or gauntlet main and they always dodge towards the nearest wall to shark for hammer recoveries. <laughs> uh, so number one, your opponent's habits. This one is pretty clear cut and the reason dodges are even possible to begin with. Pretty much any move with a low variable force is a good move to look for dodge patterns with. On Scythe, you have Satellite, Neutralite, D-Light, and sometimes Nair, both the regular and active input versions of it. For all the following dodge patterns I'll be covering, up dodges and jumps are both interchangeable. These are the dodge patterns you should watch for. Out of regular satellite and neutralite, dodge responses can vary greatly, but they're frequently very habitual, so know how to punish every kind of dodge so you know exactly what to do when you're expecting a specific one. However, a very common dodge for active input satellite at low damage is an inward pass. I, I mean, an inward dodge. In which case, I highly recommend you frequently toss out immediate neutralites or go for the dash and reverse neutralite follow-up I mentioned earlier. It happens a lot, so be ready. Out of regular D-Lite, dodge responses also vary greatly, which is why it's typically good to go for the 4-frame Nair follow-up and then try to punish their disadvantaged position in the air with pressure if it did not connect. For active input D-Lite, opponents frequently dodge directly in or directly out at low damage. For regular Nair, the most common response is down or down away, which can be punished with a down diagonal chase dodge recovery, or in many cases, a gravity cancelled side signature if you want something a little more lethal. Mordex and Mirage's side signatures are particularly good as they cover both down and evasive down dodges. People also commonly dodge horizontally in, which can be punched with a crossover recovery for the best dodge coverage. I usually default to this option, as it covers every single inward dodge as well as spot dodge, and is usually completely safe on whiff. Good players will know to dodge up against this, because that can only be covered with a hard read. For active input Nair, the most common response is a no dodge fastfall, which can be punished with a stare, or downer I guess, or a jump, which can be punished with a recovery. As for Lance's low variable force moves, you should watch for dodges out of Nairs, D-lights, and downer stage bounces. Sometimes satellites if you have a legend that actually has a decent in-sig. It's usually not wildly unsafe to try for a signature after landing any of these moves. Out of Nair, the most common response is a jump, which can be punished with another Nair or a downward dodge, which can be punished with a jump downer. Out of D-Light, the most common response is a spot dodge, which can be punished with a neutral light, or an up dodge, which can be punished with a neutral signature. 
Out of down air, the most common response is a spot dodge, which can be punished with a two frame neutral light, or an up dodge, which can be punished with a neutral signature. Out of side light, if you have a signature that can actually hit anything, the most common response is an inward dodge, which can be punished with an insig, or a spot dodge, which can be punished with a delayed insig. For Artemis' side light on Lance, you should typically always just go for her line attack follow ups. I'll talk about that mess later. So, number two is also pretty straightforward. Basically, their dodges are determined by their position on stage. As an example, people dodge differently depending on how close they are to the ledge. If you land a move that hits your opponent near the very edge of the stage, for instance, they typically either drop straight down to the safety of the wall, or try to escape high and past you. Both of those options can be punished if you're prepared for them. Another example is, like, platforms. If a player has the option to land on a platform rather than get juggled or edge guarded, obviously they'll choose the platform. Their dodges are also different depending on their proximity to you after you hit them. If your attack throws them too far, they may not dodge at all, which, in that case, you may consider even trying to punish them with a long range throw, or just reset to neutral. Their dodges will change a lot based on all kinds of factors. Anything from how many stocks they have left, how damaged they are on that stock, whether their playstyle is generally more aggressive or defensive, the weapon matchup, or even if they're ranked at 10 and they somehow have the dodging skills of a god because it's literally impossible to read them, of all of those, players' habits and stage position will definitely be the ones that have the most influence on their decisions. So to sum it up, you should always look out for patterns not only for dodges, but just general movement too. Does your opponent frequently double jump? Do they fast fall every time they're thrown off stage? Do they prefer playing grounded as opposed to aerial? Are they taunting 30 times each stock to express feral savage dominance over your coward and existence? It's your job to find their patterns and exploit them. You should definitely check out the neutral game section of Dobrain's Master Guide for more information on reading your opponent in the neutral. If you were under the impression that only Orion had stupid stuff, well then, you're sorely mistaken. Potatoes, 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 potatoes. This is all your fault. Potatoes, 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 tomatoes. You guys asked for this. This is this is not on me at all. This is completely on you. Oh shoot, I just dropped something. Now, I already covered the usefulness of platform slide charging in the Orion guide, but I feel the need to reiterate it here too. Unfortunately, Artemis's lance signatures are pretty trash, so you're not going to get much out of them when it comes to slide charging. Oh, sorry, my bad. Did I say trash? I meant garbage. Straight. Garbage. BMG, I hope you're listening. Also, both her scythe desig and insig lock her momentum. But none of that matters because her scythe side sig is. Oh, we. Somebody pour some water on me because it's getting real hot in here. The speed of this thing, oh, oh, oh. the distance of this thing is, mm. the recovery of this thing is, oh man. Woo, mom. Now, this move doesn't anti air by any means, but it hits just high enough and just low enough and just fast enough that slide charging this thing is really strong. You'll see me use this on stage platforms a lot. Traverse slide charge the signature because when it's used in the air, it can be really difficult to punish. This means it's also strong as a gravity cancel signature. I could be overselling this move, but oh my goodness, it's satisfying to hit. Since I'm already talking about signatures, let me tell you a little about her other two scythe signatures. Scythe and Sig. Now in my humble opinion, despite how fantastic her scythe sig is, this could be Artemis's best signature in her kit. Not only is it fast considering the amount of coverage it has, but it it's nearly impossible to punish if your opponent isn't already right next to you. It's currently the only signature among the current Scythe Legends that is unjumpable out of a sidelight. This means, if you catch any kind of dodge with sidelight when they're in kill percent, it's a 100% guaranteed kill confirm, unlike with the other current Scythe characters. This move is almost as busted as Cassidy's Hammer Side Sig, except Cassidy's has disturbingly less startup lag, shockingly more active frames, disgustingly less recovery frames, and slightly more people forfeiting their matches because they're triggered by an uncontestable cowgirl throwing little tornadoes at them. Sorry, it's it's just I'm Cassidy mates. They keep me up at night. Now, the other signature is her side D sig. As you can expect, it's pretty decent over the edge. That kind of goes without saying. It's not as easy to toss out freely like Ragnar's guitar D sig because of its overall slow animation, but for what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in active frames. This is a pretty solid signature, and it has two things going for it. 
The first stupid thing about this signature is that on stage, at low damage, it strings incredibly well into a horizontal speed dodge Nair. Nair hits grounded and anti-airs, which makes this that much better of a string. D-Sig into Nair isn't like a combo or anything, or even a tight string for that matter, but I've landed this on people ranging anywhere from like silver to top 50 global, so it, it works. The other stupid thing is that the charge time, the crazy hitboxing, and the recovery time that got buffed accidentally. Artemis down lance now recovers quicker and hovers slightly longer before falling. Yes, this happened. Makes this move a complete master of bait. <clears throat> makes this move, uh, makes this a move that is good at baiting. You, you don't have to tell me, I, I heard it that time. Oh my, for the last time, Asuri, I'm not gonna drink holy water. <laughs> I know you ain't breaking another one of my dishes. <clears throat> so that covers her size signatures. As for her lance signatures, I mean, they're they're not all bad. Her lance D stick is a lot like choosing from a Pop Tart's variety pack. You might not want the orange flavored Pop Tart, but when your other two choices are root beer and maple bacon, your best option is to not eat it at all, or drench it in a gallon of milky lies to at least make it edible. So her Lance d used to be pretty much her worst Lance signature. Then our Cerulean overlords over at Elephant Gaming Enterprises finally graced us artist mains with a buff in patch 3.10. These three little recovery frames basically turned her worst Lance signature into her best Lance signature. And that's saying a lot, considering it doesn't kill well on stage, it covers literally only one dodge read, the hitboxes are frustratingly high for edge guarding, the inlag is rarely worth the risk, and has such a short max charge time that timing it is as easy as maneuvering an actual rocket ship, while being sucked up by a black hole. So basically, this signature is completely unusable on stage at a high level. So you might be asking yourself, how on earth is this her best land signature? Well, its use is incredibly niche, unfortunately, but it does this very niche job decently well. You know that gallon of milk I mentioned? It's called gravity canceling. You drench it in that, just, just pour it all over. Her Lance Dizik is particularly strong as a jump or dodge when players are trying to return to stage. So although this signature is essentially unviable in almost every single other use case because of where it hits and how slow it is, it's at least pretty effective as an edge guard read. I don't ever recommend using the grounded version, unless there's air below you to jump out from. The signature when done directly from the ground is almost always way too punishable for the amount of reward it has. Her Lance Insic is incredibly unremarkable. I really don't have much to say about it. It doesn't hit stacked, it's too slow for dodge punishes, its movement is far too limited for dodge read coverage, and the only thing smaller than this orb is this orb. Oh. Wait. It's not bad, but it's not particularly good either. It does put you in a perfect position to juggle and can sometimes be used against floaty players, but that applies to pretty much any neutral signature. I didn't plan on going through every single one of her signatures, but here we are. Artemis's Lance size signature is... it's a... Uh, don't use it. I can't even make a joke here, because it already is one. So don't ever use her Lance size signature when your opponent is actually in range for her side signature. What I mean is, only use it when your opponent is out of range, because it can sometimes, rarely, barely, hardly, infrequently, seldomly, almost neverly, catch dash and approaches. But that's about it, other than the offhand read now and then. If you use it when they are in range, you will get punished for it. Despite how safe it looks, you will get punished by any competent player. Honestly, you're probably better off avoiding the signature entirely. Oh, okay, so, sorry, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit salty, but at least I'm not as salty as the maple bacon pop tart that the signature happens to be. EMG. Please, stop buffing her scythe. We just need her lance to be usable. Heck, just, just make her side sig usable. All it needs to be viable is a less recovery. That's it. That's it. So, uh, I guess that's all for the signatures. So, other stupid stuff. Unarmed. Thing is, everything about unarmed is pretty much exactly the same as my last guide. I still highly recommend neutralite, sidelight, neutralite. It works at pretty much all ranks, and sometimes you can sneak in a D-light ground bound too. The other option I sometimes use for a mix-up is Neutralite, Diagonal to Horizontal Speed Dodge, Reverse Sair. This gives you more invulnerability frames, and it works when there's two damage for a sidelight follow-up. Only other thing I'd add to this section on top of the last video is that Dash Jump Cider is super non-committal, which makes it very good at pressuring. And so yeah, that's it for Unarmed. Weapon throws are also pretty much exactly the same as my last video. 
I have nothing to add, other than weapon throws being good at approaching, like I mentioned earlier. Now I do have a couple of other tips to throw in. The first one is movement. This one is absolutely huge. There's a lot more to movement than the dash jump fastballs I mentioned earlier, but if you have not learned them already, learning these is easily one of the most beneficial techniques I've mentioned in this entire video. This isn't because dash jump fastballs themselves will instantly make you better, but practicing movement this intricate can greatly improve the amount of control you have over all of your movement. The other thing relating to movement is dash platform cancels. Now there is some benefit to learning them, but at the end of the day you probably won't get much out of them to be quite honest, other than trying to look flashy as your opponent responds. At the very least, practicing them might help improve your overall control, just like the dash and fastfalls will. For a little more info on this, as well as ledge cancels with attacks, check out Dobrain's second video over advanced techniques, also linked above. The last movement tip to keep in mind is a little bit more attack based. A bit like the gravity cancel lance neutralites I mentioned earlier, a good tip to know is that generally, gravity cancel attacks, especially if they're long range, designed to anti-air, and don't move your hurt box, can be particularly effective at controlling airspace and juggling, because they let you attack at a distance and immediately allow you to protect yourself as you fall, or react to your opponent as necessary. Using them can often allow you to retain a lot of stage control despite placing yourself in an airborne position. I do this often after scything airs to catch the occasional read, but also to command more airspace. You can see some of the benefits of this in signatures like both Artemis' Insigs, Nyx's Scythe Insig, Ragnar's Axe Insig, or even something simple like Bow Neutralite, because it's long ranged, keeps you in place, and anti airs. My next tip is the Triple D Dash, don't dodge. One bad habit I see often is some players always use their chase dodge after grounded attacks even in cases when a dash would have worked perfectly too. Don't do that. Chase dodges should only be used if you are in the air, or if you feel you absolutely need the movement or invulnerability frames for your next follow-up. Dashing instead of chase dodging allows you to keep your dodge as you approach, which is obviously very important for maintaining your own safety. Regarding edge guarding, you... I... Regarding edge guarding and now I'm starting, departing, and now I'm far... You should not go off stage like I do. I just do that because it's more fun, but it's also much more incredulably stupid or full. For Scythe, try to poke with the neutral lights, D lights, and if you're really feeling it, you can try a dash jump reverse ground pound to poke over the edge. I don't really remember if there's actually any benefit to reversing it with Scythe, but like, I just do the same inputs on every weapon. Don't don't question it. I I don't I don't freaking know. For Lance, you shouldn't go off stage. Take a tip out of Kostelix's book, and if you do want to go off stage, just dash dance on the ledge for a good five minutes, then go for an unexpected ground pound when they use up their options. Or try to bait with a D-Light or two. Edge guarding is pretty much just a form of the positional pressure I explained earlier in the video. And going off stage is the offensive pressure. Or as I like to call it, the I'm gonna chase you off stage and hate myself in a few seconds after you get me because I just gave you the win after having a two stock lead over you, so instead I guess I'll just go play Marco Polo in the bathtub with my toaster because at least he doesn't call me a spammer noob easy after I SD maneuver. I'm fine. The final tip is to, well, frankly, know all your options when returning to stage. It's good to try and cover yourself with an attack or two when trying to get back on stage. For Scythe, at least when you're making your way back to the wall, you can try to cover yourself with Nairs and Sairs. For Lance, Nair can be incredibly effective. You should generally try to use the back end of Lance Nairs to hit the corner of the stage when you're stuck on the wall. It can counter a large handful of attacks from above. Oftentimes, this can get you back on stage relatively quickly. Unless, of course, your opponent has excellent spacing or is... is thatch. Regardless, doing this can easily save you a stock every now and then. One of the options that I don't always see lower ranked players make use of is using their attacks as a last ditch effort to gain a chase dodge if your opponent overcommits to their edge guard and gets too close to you. You should only use this technique in the absolute worst case scenario if you've exhausted virtually all of your other options and of course if you're lucky enough to have a mentally challenged opponent. <clears throat> Also, dodging straight up is a perfectly good option, and in a lot of cases it's actually much safer than going straight into the wall, because dodges cancel upon wall touch. Keep in mind, although this is very effective all the way up to diamond, sometimes higher ranked diamond players will be observant enough to actually read this and punish it. 
So it's pretty obvious that this video is completely overloaded with information, so here's a general overview of the most important stuff. For Scythe, remember that movement is your primary approach option, but ne'er dare and sometimes neutral I work too. In terms of follow-ups, Scythe is pretty loaded, but be familiar with its main grounded and aerial punishes. From the air, it's down air, active input nair, delight nair. From the ground, it's neutralite nair, ser, nair, ser. For reads, remember side light into dash neutral light, either forward or reversed. Remember to toss out delayed neutral lights after your attacks if you don't have a read on your opponent yet. And try to avoid side light neutral light as your go to string, as it's very easily escapable. Use side light neutral air instead. As of her side signatures, her side sig is incredible for slide charging. For Lance, just like the last guide, remember to use gravity cancel neutral lights every now and then. You should also keep in mind that Ser and dash jump fastfall Sairs can be very strong at approaching. If your opponent punishes them, instead focus on just staying grounded. You should absolutely start using Neutralite, Jump, Speed, Dodge, Reverse, Nair to cover a majority of dodges after Neutralite. As for reading, Double Nairs are good, and Downer into Neutral Signature works pretty well. Be sure to gravity cancel her d to punish opponent's jumps and dodges when returning to stage. When it comes to other tips, remember that movement is the key to everything in this game, and a good quick way to help improve your movement is to learn to dash jump fastfall. And the absolute final tip of this video is that Brawlhalla is not about attacking. It's about punishing. Sure, they both involve attacking, but the mindset of this is very, very different. Additionally, good players will punish attacks, but great players will be able to punish movement too. So hopefully this video helps some of you out there looking to improve with either Lance or Scythe. I'm not really one to advertise my channel or Discord server or anything, but uh, yeah, if you want to talk to me, feel free to join. I try my best to respond to every single person who messages me. And you can also find out when I'm streaming, because apparently people actually want to see someone spam signatures off stage. Special thanks to everyone still watching my channel after so long. This video almost didn't get out, and <laughs> sorry to get sappy or anything, but the sheer overwhelming support from you guys, everyone who's commented on my videos, everyone in my Discord server, and those of you who threw donations at me out of nowhere, it's actually your generosity that helped me get some of the tools I needed to finish this video. You are all the reason this came out. Thank you. And, uh, thanks for watching.